Hi everyone, hello from Germany. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to present my exploratory paper at the Participatory Design Conference 2020 in Colombia this year. I'm very happy that we can share our research digitally and that you made the online conference happen. My name is Luisa Hilmer and I'm a designer and design historian based in Hamburg. I trained in social design at the University of Fine Arts in Hamburg and graduated at the Royal College of Art um, doing my MA in History of Design. My research focuses on contemporary and historical case studies regarding participatory design in housing and the formation of space. At the moment, I'm working in curation exhibition planning at the Museum for Arts and Crafts Hamburg and for the Vitra Design Museum. As part of the exploratory paper section, Spatial Agencies, I would like to present my paper, Participatory Housing, Seagull Self-Built Method. To begin with, I want to show you a short video introducing the case study. Participatory design is an approach where various stakeholders are involved. Users are directly involved in the team of experts as they help identifying shortcomings of design solutions, thus contributing to the project. They play an active role in the decision-making process. Participatory design techniques of the 1970s emerged from architects' attempts to resolve the defects of modern housing. Walter Siegel was a German-British architect who developed a method to deal with the circumstances of housing construction. He focused on small-scale architecture, nevertheless getting orders for the construction of residential houses in and around London in the 1950s. Inspired by the construction of his own home, Siegel decided to begin the conception of self-built houses. He wanted to offer an alternative mass housing, where the plan was developed by the architect, but the houses designed and built by residents. In the 1970s, the Council of Lewisham released three plots of land for the concept to be applied. The so-called Siegel method made it possible that self-builders were able to set up the wooden frames by themselves. Ordinary people, or rather non-professionals, got the chance to create their own housing using tools usually limited to professionals. Modular materials helped assembling the buildings and participants were able to carry out the work steps. By limiting to commercially available materials and purely dry construction operations, the construction and maintenance of buildings were inexpensive. A modular grid served as a framework during the design process. The main idea was that self-builders were participating in the planning of the housing from the beginning even before construction. The role of the participants was characterized by active involvement. Self-builders were consultants for Siegel and vice versa. The architect offered evening schools so that the whole community could acquire basic skills for the process of building a house. In 1976, the first houses were finished and residents felt a strong connection to their community. In 1987, self-builders founded the Walter Siegel Self-Built Trust, promoting the concept and publishing construction manuals for timber frame houses. Both communities Walters Way and Siegel Close still exist today.
Coming back to my paper, the study explores the relationship in a participatory process in housing design by analyzing the Lewisham community. It demonstrates that these processes are heavily linked to material culture. Residents use tools like models and grid drawings for individual designs, being advisors for the architect and vice versa. The paper highlights the correlation between design history and architectural practice as a possible platform for a reflection on the built environment and participatory design. That brings me to the end of my presentation, but I'm really happy to answer your questions and you can send them via the conference chat or email as you like. Thanks for listening.